Hi, I'm Owen Smith, and I'm a comedian. If there's one thing I've learned in over 20 years of doing stand-up, is that comics never throw away their old notebooks. Oh, yeah, the big notebooks. <laughs> 96. So I got a few of my comedian friends to bust out their old notebooks, journals, and tapes. Women want 1962 courting, but haven't counted in inflation. <laughs> Sure, it's not their greatest material. That's funny. That's how fucking stupid I am. I thought that was a punchline. Which is exactly why I got them to perform it on stage. I don't give a fuck if they laugh. <laughs> this is Notebooks. I remember this joke. Women want three things. Good looking, a good sense of humor, and a good living. Whereas our three, we want big titties. <laughs> I don't drink. People treat you funky. They put they put their problems on you. I guess your father never beat you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is it. So I don't drink. People treat you funky. They put their problems on you. OK, I guess your father never beat you. I suppose you lived up to your mother's expectations. <laughs> Put your hands together for my good friend, Mr. Eric Griffin. <laughs> I will start with the first joke I ever wrote. It was about when you have a big nose. Big nose people, where you guys at? <laughs> you know, I could see you, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I was like, when you have a big nose, you only take pictures one way, just like this. He was like, turn to the side. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was funny too when I first. So when did you when did you start comedy? Well, f the official real like I decided this is what I want to do was in two thousand and three. Uh huh. You know, and that's when I went head first. You know, I quit my job and what was the job? I was working at a school. I had a whole different plan. I had a whole different life plan. I thought I was going to do something completely different. What did you think you wanted? Well, I, well, I I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just yeah. thought this would be the this would be the, like, not the easiest, but it's like the most practical thing to do. Yeah. So then when, like, I had to, you know, unforeseen circumstances, I had to quit. I quit. Uh -huh. You know, I hated my boss. I hated just, I didn't know what I was doing. And then I was like, let me do this. Because I was tired of hearing all the time, oh, God, you're funny. Right, right. Then I, like, when I was 22, I went to, like, a comedy class. Where? Um, oh, I went to UCLA Extension. Uh-huh. Taught by Sandy Shore. Wow. So at the time I thought, oh, I'm, I'm gonna be in at the comedy store. Turns out that that's the the, the actual opposite, opposite way to get into the comedy store. So and I didn't know what to do. I went. To, I would go to open mics every eight weeks, and then I would see the same people doing the same thing, and I'd be like, this is nonsense. Uh, you know, arrogant. You know yeah. what I mean? Even more arrogant. <laughs> you can believe that. I know. <laughs> that's 20, 23 year old Eric was like, I'm funniest person on the planet. You know, with no <laughs> jokes. <laughs> Didn't know what I was doing, and I remember the the, the show <laughs> the showcase for that class yeah. was at the comedy store. What? I had a good first set, first time I ever performed. I, I, I that's when I knew I was in love with it, you know, because uh -huh. it was just like, man, what a drug, you know. What kind of stuff were you doing at twenty three? I remember my first. I remember some of the jokes from my first set was I had a joke about Black Jeopardy, uh -huh. like Jeopardy categories. I uh -huh. it was Black Barbecue Holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Take barbecue holidays for three hundred dollars. <laughs> Blind singers. <laughs> yeah, it's always it's the answer is Stevie Wonder yeah, every yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I had a joke about Superman. Oh, this is wow, this is so hacky. Wow. But it was like, cause I wear glasses, uh -huh. so I'll be like, how come they didn't know Clark Kent was <laughs> right, Superman? Right. Then I would be like this. Let me show you, Clark Kent, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Clark Kent, you know. Damn. Let's see. I had some premises. One was about, you know, you know how Christians hate gays. You know what I mean? <laughs> you guys know about that, right? <laughs> but I was like, if God doesn't like gay people, why did he make the prostate so pleasurable? <laughs> it's just me? Nobody else? <laughs> Nobody else in the booty stuff? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so that joke doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> Interracial dating. Uh oh. The couple with the highest approval rating, white guy and Asian girl. <laughs> this is my rationale. 
We've been dealing with this for 40 years. Dudes were coming back from Nam with Asian women. <laughs> what, was, what was I thinking? We all got that friend that takes it too far. Uh, he turns into David Carradine. <laughs> you got to take your shoes off when you go to the house. He's got a statue of Buddha. He's taking Kung Fu on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> He has a gi on at a sushi place. <laughs> Let the same dude bring home Shamika from Compton. <laughs> and then I had all these horrible experiences. I remember being at um, Mix Nuts, which yeah, was, uh, they had the fan. And then Jay Anthony Brown was hosting this show, yeah. and um, he didn't know who was next, you know. So he's killing too, you know. He he was killing. Mm -hmm. So he's finishing. He's like, ah, oh, who next, you know? <laughs> Look over, all the comics. I'm standing in the front, everybody take a step back, you know? And I was like, oh, I guess it's me. You know, they, you know how black comics sometimes will bring you up if they don't know you? Yes. So I was like, Eric Griffin, it's like, I don't even know who this is, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I went up and- I hope he funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. He I, not me. I got like a, a minute 45 uh -huh. and he's giving me the light. You know, Jay, Jay was. Yeah, yeah he give me the light. Gonna, and I stay on stage, so I'm like, damn, I got, I got the light. I guess I got, you know. He got on stage, and he did like 20 minutes about how bad I was. No way. You know, I even remember one of the jokes. He was like, you got the light? We try to set our girlfriends on fire to get you off stage. <laughs> he was killing me. And I was sitting on a stool in the back, and I was just like, <laughs> nobody would talk to me. Nobody would come near me. You know what I mean? You don't want that stink on you. It was so bad. But I was shook. That shook me. I didn't get back on stage for like nine months. Whoa. I just did not have it at the time. Yeah. I don't know what to even do. I was like, wow, what do you do? It just, it just, I, I just got, ugh. <laughs> the hardest part about comedy is the fact that, you know, in this day and age, there's so many co comedic outlets, there's so many like TV shows that do comedy, and so many networks putting out specials, and then people say, oh, you stole somebody's joke, because people think that comics sit down and watch everybody's special. And then, we don't. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> we're actually all haters. I don't want to watch that fool special. <laughs> Wingman. I need uglier friends. <laughs> oh, look at this one. Women want 1962 courting, but haven't counted in inflation. <laughs> Being multiracial in prison. <laughs> What's that about? Well, because I wouldn't know what gang to join. <laughs> <laughs> My very first, like, out-of-town gigs, after getting back into it, you know, uh, it was this club called Marley's in Phoenix, mm -hmm. and Dan Marley, the basketball player, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So he's white, right? So you think, oh, it's this bar gig. They flying you out. They're putting you up in the Hilton. And this is the first time that when, you, when I got to the airport, a dude had a sign that said Eric Griffin on it. Wow. So I was just like, ah, you know, <laughs> which is so dumb, but yeah. I was just like, that's me, everybody. Sorry. Was, you know, so I get to the gig and it was like Def Jam. And I didn't know. I was like, oh, whoa. So I go, the MC, I go up and the MC's not doing that well. He isn't setting the table. The room's a little funky. If I have to, when I look back on it, mm -hmm. I go up. I did what I thought was the very best I could do. I was do I was pulling out tricks. I was trying everything I could. Right. When I got off stage, the DJ played, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and then the MC went on, and he proceeded to like start talking about me. And then the joke of the night for him was, Eric Griffin ain't ever coming back here, <laughs> right? So I'm sitting in the back, and I'm. But here's the thing, I was in the back. And I was dying because he was killing me, and it was funny. Wow. So I loved it, right? Yeah. Dan and Green goes up. Da, 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 da. Dan and Green man. goes up, and he ain't doing well either. But he thought he was gonna do well, to, to, to the point where at the end of his set he was like, "Fuck y'all! I already got my check." You know, that's what. Uh, <laughs> that's the kind of show it was. <laughs> but anyway, the MC comes walking back, and he sees me, and he's like, "What you still? Do oh, you still here? Like, what you still doing here?" And I was like, "Man." You're killing me. That stuff is funny, man. And I stood in the back, and then I knew. I was like, oh, this doesn't matter. Wow. That was the moment that I knew it didn't matter. Explain I, that. It, it, whether you do good or bad, 
whether the room is good, the room is bad, whether the crowd is into it, small crowd, big crowd, it don't matter. It's not going to break me anymore. Nice. You know, and after that, I was just like, it was the sky's the limit. Wow. I had this other thing about, like, I always wanted to be a chef on the Food Network. And it's because it doesn't seem like they really do any work because they have a bunch of sous chefs that do all the work. You know when you're watching the show, they'll always be like, okay, we're gonna make this casserole. And then they start making the casserole, right? They go, in each step, they, they start, then they go, eh, and then they pull out the finished product. Like, here we go. <laughs> okay, now, so this step right here, you do this. And then they, they do all this shit, then they go, let me show you what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> Then they go to the oven and pull it out. And you never, you never see them cook the shit or like prepare. The sous chef's doing all that. They're cutting all the onions. I feel like every job should have that. Like your tax guy should have a sous chef. <laughs> so you're going in to do your taxes and he's showing you numbers and he goes, you know what? Let me show you what this looks like. <laughs> pull your taxes out of the oven, you know? God, I can't believe I wrote that down. Can you believe I wrote that down? Like I was going to do that. Man, woo-hoo, woo! And I'm gonna leave you with this. I'm burning all this. Dude, look how fearless you were though. Look how look how hard you were working to discover your voice. And... <laughs> no, seriously. This is crazy. Like I don't even I think about like I don't even do it like this anymore. Right. It's funny that I don't I don't do it like that. And I think part of me should. I think part of you like you should like write down your thoughts and then because then you can look back on them even like a week later and be like, what was I thinking here? And then like still process it. Cause now I'm so comfortable with like who I am and what I like to talk about. I can literally, something can happen to me and I'll go right to the comedy store or wherever and I'll just talk about it on stage. Like that's how I came up with a bit for my half hour special. I went to go see that movie, The Purge. Mm -hmm. No, 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 um, Insidious. Insidious. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I went to go see Insidious and I went right to the comedy store and I was like, I just saw this movie Insidious and I started talking about it. And then after like, and that's how I do it. I'll, I'll start talking and then I'll do it again, then I'll add stuff. And the people that have seen me a lot, they, they'll, I know that something's happening because they'll come up to me and be like, oh, I like what you did with that bit. And I'll be like, what are you talking, and I, now I know what they mean. I say, I know what you're talking about because this is now, because then you get to a point where it's like, pow, 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 I know how to say it, I know what inflections in my voice get certain laughs, and right. it's like, it's yeah, making me, just making me think about a lot of stuff. That's the point of this, man. Thank you, fam. I need y'all to get out. See you tomorrow night. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Thank you for watching. Say please subscribe. Please hit the cries. Hit the notification bell. A notification bell. That's right. And watch some more videos in this box right here. Watch some more videos and some box is right over here. My man, there it is. Thanks, guys.